Welcome to the FAA Formula 3 magazine show. And we're in the south of France for the season opener of the 2016 FIA Formula 3 European Championship and with an action-packed program from Paul Ricard. The first of 10 race weekends in the championship. That means 30 races in total. Seven teams, 21 drivers, all of them having to have a minimum of one year single-seater racing experience. And in 2016, the number one belongs to Prema's 17-year-old Canadian, Lance Stroll, who in 2015 really was fifth season. overall. Uh, I'm very confident after finishing a strong uh, last season. And uh, it's not all about winning every race, it's about finishing uh, in the front and, and scoring good points. So, um, yeah, it should be interesting. And there's again, there's a lot of competition in the championships. So, uh, yeah, it uh, should be a good one. This year, there are also some new faces with famous names in the paddock. Pedro Pique and Harrison Newey. I mean, you just look at the setups around, it's a lot more professional. Um, there's a lot more guys working with you, a lot more engineers. The whole car is a lot more complicated. Um, it's a lot more parameters you can change to suit it towards you. And it's just quicker in general, a lot more downforce, a lot harder to drive. And obviously, competitions of drivers is um, harder. We chose here because it's a, it's a championship in which you test a lot and you do a lot of races. You do 30, 30 races in a year. The level is really, very high and the car is really close to the car that I raced in Brazil. So it was a good choice and I think I will learn a lot here this year. Oh, Formula 3 is quite good, you know, you can... Um... All the cars need the same, there's no different engines. Uh, I think it's just to learn about the car and have a good engineers and, uh, and show what you can, can do it. Not only are there new faces in this year's championship, there are also some modifications to the rules and regulations. We will have uh, a new penalty this year. Uh, it will be the 5 or 10 seconds time penalty. That means if we have minor infringements from a driver, we don't need to give him automatically a drive-through penalty, which would destroy his race. We can give him additional time at the end of the race to his total time. And um, we have a new race length. That means we are not driving for racing for um, laps. We are racing for 33 minutes plus one lap. Hi, my name is Lance Stroll, and today I'm going to show you a lap around Paul Ricard. So now we're heading onto the front straightaway, shifting through all the gears, all the way up to six gears. We reach very high speeds on this front straightaway, and we're coming up to a very hard braking zone for corner one. We want to carry a lot of speed on entry, go over the curb early on power, and then corner two, cut a lot of curb, and again, almost flat, so it's a very high speed corner. Coming into corner three, a chicane, you want to carry some speed in, but also keep good minimum speed. And again, early on power going on to a very long back straightaway. Once again, through all the gears up to six. And we're coming up to a quick right-hander, which is easy flats in our car. And uh, corner six, which is a very fast right-hander. A long parabolica. You want to carry a lot of speed in. And then early on power again preparing yourself for corner seven which is again another long corner so once again carry a lot of speed in and early on power and heading to corner nine it's important to prepare as much as possible to the right hand side and carry as much minimum speed as you can taking a little bit of curb at the end of the corner and preparing yourself as well as possible for the last corner coming onto the front straight away and that's a lap around Paul Ricard. Well, we're now ready for the first race of the weekend. Quickest in qualifying, Premier driver Lance Stroll starts from pole position. We did a very good job yesterday on the quali, either on the quali one and quali two, secure all the three pole position. Now we need just to continue working. The championship will be hard. There is quite an hard competition, but we'll do our best as usual. On the right-hand side of your screen, Lance Stroll. On the left-hand side of your screen, Nick Cassidy. 
And as the lights went out, it was a better start from Nick Cassidy, who led down to turn one, taking full advantage of the drier track. Well, just behind the two Prema cars, George Russell. And a spin from number nine, Sete Kamara. Well, Nick Cassidy continued to lead from Lance Stroll. George Russell still in third and top rookie. Ben Barnacote with the Racing Steps Foundation livery in fourth. So you can see Jensen in trouble there, getting away from the grid. And a lot of flurrying for position as they headed down to turn one on the damp track. Sete Kamara hit by teammate Nico Kari. Well, at the end of lap one, it was a mistake from Nick Cassidy. That meant Lance Stroll took the lead at the start of lap two. Cassidy kept Lance Stroll honest with the number 12 machine of George Russell pushing hard in third place. And the wind picking up at Paul Ricard. Further back, that is a move for position on Pedro Piquet. Callum Millot there just slotting through up to 10th place. Well, the gap out front started to shrink as Nick Cassidy found his rhythm. And as the laps ticked down, almost putting race leader Lance Stroll under pressure. But as the laps ticked off, Lance Stroll it was who crossed the line to take the first victory of 2016. Yeah, for sure. We made a good start, got into uh, P3, and we just uh, just stayed in that position the whole race, really. I think uh, Prima had a little bit extra on us uh, from mid-race mid onwards, but um, no, still to get a podium is a, a good first result. First of all, really good job by the team. Uh, awesome to finish 1-2. It's a little bit of a shame. I think the, the race was one at the start. I got a good start and put myself in the perfect position, but uh, messed up at the end of lap one, and, and that kind of was all over for me so in the end uh, I think Lance and I were quite equal um, but yeah after my mistake it was uh, hard to do anything. Yeah it wasn't all perfect though I think you know the start could have been better and we, we made a little mistake I think Nick got it right so uh, yeah that was a bit of a mistake from, from my part but then after that uh, yeah uh, I think I got fortunate uh, Nick made a little mistake maybe coming out of the last corner and, um, and I was able to get back in the slipstream, stream and then uh, I was I was beside him going into corner one so he kind of, uh, he kind of gave me the place there. Once again, the team gave us a great car to, to finish 1-2, and uh, I think we gave a good, uh, a good gap to the third one. So, uh, yeah, that's, what, uh, that's the way uh, we do things at Prema. Well, Lance's dad, Lawrence Stroll, and the whole Prema Power team will be pleased with the result. Their first win of the season. Well, next to come, more racing action from Le Castellet, so make sure you stay with us. Back to Paul Ricard in the south of France to start the 2016 season of the FIA Formula 3 Championship. Mixed weather conditions, wet tyres and slicks are ready, but one factor is always important, the aerodynamics of the car. My name is Remco Advocaat. I'm one of the engineers of Van Amersfoort Racing, and today I'll explain you something about aerodynamics, as aerodynamics is very important for us because it allows us to go fast through corners. And for the young drivers, it's also important because this is their first feeling with aerodynamics and that makes it really valuable for learning how to drive a race car. The first contact point with air of our car is our front wing. Uh, the front wing has the same principle as a wing on an aircraft, whereas in an aircraft it lifts the aircraft up. Our front wing pushes the car onto the track and that generates downforce and extra grip. 
Now that we create a downforce at the front of the car, we also have to balance it with generating downforce at the rear of the car. And that's why we have the rear wing. The rear wing works the same as the front wing, it generates downforce. And because we have downforce in the front and the rear, we can balance exactly uh, the aerodynamics of the car. Another important aerodynamic aspect of our car is the floor and the diffuser. Uh, the floor uh, accelerates the flow underneath the car and the diffuser uses this accelerated flow in order to create extra downforce, which also makes the car more stable in the corners. We don't only use the airflow to create downforce, but we also have to guide the air nicely around our car. Therefore, we have some tricks. For example, we have a turning vane on the side pod, which guides the air around the car in a nice way. Even if the airflow around our car is not always visible, still the drivers really have to trust on all the things we do with aerodynamics in order to make the perfect lap. So let's get ready for the second race on pole is Prima star Maximilian Gunther. And back in P6, Van Amersfoort driver Callum Illot and a former Van Amersfoort driver was also Formula 3 is always such a nice championship to watch. Uh, it's amazing to be here and to see the people I've been working with last year. And, uh, and well, yeah, it's great to come back here and to see exciting races like Formula 3 always do. Well, rookie Harry Newey has a well-known name in motorsport because of his father, Adrian Newey, who is also on the grid. It's a very competitive series. Um, lots of very talented drivers here, um, some of them in their second and third years, so it's, it's a really tough grid. Um, it's where you kind of find out where you are, so Harry did a very good job in the first race. We'll see how the season goes. Well, the start of the second race, number 17, Maximilian Gunther stalled his engine from pole position. Apparently the clutch was too hot. That meant Nick Cassidy yet again took the lead into turn one. But there was trouble further back for the vast majority of the field. Ben Barnicote hits Lance Stroll, who hits number 22, Joel Eriksson. And the first safety car of the season was in turn deployed. A replay of the start and crash into turn one. stricken car of Ben Barnico. There's Maximilian Gunther, who we saw stalled at the beginning, also involved in that. And ben Barnico was to get a drop of five positions for causing a collision for the next race. Well, Ralph Arrell was the uh, next to get it wrong. Mechanical failure, the cause of that by the looks of things. That brought out the safety car for the second time. And the restart, the race went green with only one lap to go. Callum Illot, it was out front. And you and Cassidy dicing for second place in turn one. Lorandi out wide in the day glow yellow and blue Carlin car. Well, Cassidy just managing to stay ahead of Zui and out front it was Callum Illot. Nick Carey with Lorandi right up behind his rear wing across the line to take the check of flag and the cars fan out down to turn one. What well, a Van Amersfoort racing squad celebrating their victory. Callum Miller ahead of Nick Cassidy. Oh, obviously, it feels fantastic. And uh, th also, it's my first year as a rookie year, and uh, to finish podium in the first round is really good result for me. And uh, in the beginning of the se season, my plan was I didn't expect I can do go up to podium. We had it under control, 
and then the rain come in the mid race, so I was okay. And then it just seemed on one lap, uh, the more more run rain came, and uh, I went off. Look, my mistake. The team did a good job, and I had a good car. I was in a position to win the race. We'd done everything right, and uh, yeah, not ideal. It was a bit chaotic, really. I mean, with the rain. And halfway through, Nick made the mistake um, with the rain, and I was trying to be cautious as well. I think he went a little bit too wide on the rubber, and it just it, he just lost grip. So yeah, for me it was quite a challenge, but yeah, it was awesome to win like that as well. Champagne for the guys on the podium after race two on the Saturday, and after the break, well, we'll have all the action from race three. So make sure you stay with us. Well, race three from the season opener of the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. And the weather on Sunday had not improved. Cloudy, windy, and some drizzle. Almost ready for the off in this third race. But we look at Team Hightech GP. An idea to making it happen is a long process. I think the first thing is obviously to get a workshop. Obviously, to be based in Silverstone is great for us. It's the hub of motorsport. Um, and then obviously, you know, you need some cars, some people. And realistically, it takes sort of six, seven months to get stuff built to go testing. And I think obviously 12 months till we're fully ready. I rely a lot on uh, my team manager, David. He's done this for many years. And it obviously helps me because he knows, for example, the companies we buy the race trucks from. Uh, you've got some in England, some in Germany. Um, obviously, the cars all come from Delara, but you still have a lot of development yourself you'd like to do with them. I think from our side, we're very fortunate that with England being a hub of motorsport where we are, there's a lot of good mechanics who I've worked with in the past, David himself. It's very nice to get that group of people back together. Well, the most experienced driver in the team is Britt George Russell, a rookie in 2015 and a race winner. With, uh, with Pytech and uh, had a lot of enthusiasm uh, being a new team and uh, they're really passionate to, to go out and be successful. And uh, one of the things we spoke about at the end of last year, their, uh, their idea about going into the season uh, worked really well for me and I got on well with the guys. And it, it was just a, a good package for me and uh, I felt I would uh, be most successful in, in high tech. There's a lot of expectation, I think, as a new team. They know the sort of people we have involved and the drivers we have. George is very experienced, a, a good driver, and we have two very strong rookies in Nikita and Ben. I mean, from our side, I think it doesn't change. You know, we want to win. Whether that happens immediately, later on, it doesn't change. I think we just keep working. Well, for a new team, there's a lot to learn in the championship. Sadly, because there was less than the man that treated one kilo of fuel at the end of qualifying two, George Russell was sent to the back of the grid. Well, second pole position of the weekend for Maximilian Gunther means a second chance after stalling at the start of race two. Yes, I think Maximilian um, is a professional racer and uh, he has a good feeling today and uh, we will see, uh, I hope, the best. Well, Lightning doesn't strike twice, so it's a good start from the pole sitter, Gunter. Uh, trouble on P3 for Callum Millot, who stalls. And then going wide in turn one, number 24, Ben Barnico, and number 10, Nico Kari. Oh, plenty of jostling for position further back. The one plate of Lance Stroll involved in that melee. And a replay of the start. We'll see that Nico Kari had contact with number 21, Antoine Hubert, into turn one. And there you can see the Red Bull machine of Kerry getting launched up into the air. And off onto the tarmac runoff. Well, further back, the number 22 machine is Joel Eriksson overtaking the number seven of Mikkel Jensen. This is for third place. You 
You see a replay here of Ericsson cleanly up the inside of Jensen. Callum Miller, the number six machine. Further back, number seven, and Mikko Jensen was coming under pressure from Lance Stroll in the fight for fourth. And in turn, Nick Cassidy under pressure from Ericsson in the fight for second. Cassidy, the number two car ahead of the number 22 of Joel Ericsson. Well, as the race went on, Cassidy came on strong and started to put his teammate and race leader, Maximilian Gunter, under pressure. Gunter with the advantage over Nick Cassidy. Side by side, number 20 of Harry Newey and 21 of Anton Hubert. This is for six. And then Newey just out on the slippery curb. Bit of contact, and that just spun the young Brit around. On the last quarter of the race, Cassidy contact with number 17, Maximilian Gunter, but Gunter managed to still come out on top, pumps the air as he takes his first victory of the year. Nick Cassidy yet again. The bridesmaid not managing to be the bride on his return to the series. What's commonly known as a lunge. No love lost there between the two Prema Power team teammates and uh, Gunter though living to fight another day. I don't think that'll be the last win for that young man as the season plays out. Well, Maximilian Gunter ahead of Nick Cassidy and then Joel Eriksson rounding out the rostrum. It's a beautiful day, definitely. I'm very happy now about the victory. It's a great feeling to, to be here now. So, um, yeah, a double victory for the team is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I'm very, very pleased for the team. Three seconds is a very good weekend. It's, we showed we had the performance to win in every race, especially that last one. Uh, look, I'm, I'm all over the leader and uh, I had... I had the speed, so it made a good impression, and uh, yeah, you can see that we're strong, and it looks good for the championship ahead. It feels amazing for me. Uh, the good feeling is that the speed is already here. It feels really, really good. We have we have made a, such a super walk in this uh, winter, uh, and now we show that the the work was good. So it feels really good actually. With three second place finishes, Nick Cassidy leads the championship, followed by the three race winners of the weekend. Lance Stroll, Maximilian Gunter, and Callum Miller. And with the champagne flowing on the last podium of the weekend, we say goodbye. We'll see you in three weeks for round two at the Hungara Ring.